So if you, if you have skin irritation, you might want to use a gentler form of retinol, something like a retinol palmitate, right? Or something called HPR. Now, number one, ascorbic acid. Number two, other skincare acids. So when we talk about other skincare acids, we talk about either alpha hydroxy acids or beta hydroxy acids. In your alpha hydroxy acids, you have acids, for example, which are small molecules because they're small molecules that penetrate your skin a little bit easier. For example, glycolic acid. Whilst larger molecules, for example, like mandelic acid, have big molecules, which means the penetration down into your epidermis is less. So as a rule, generally speaking, we say, let's not mix your retinol, let's not mix your vitamin C with skincare acids like alpha hydroxy acids. Certainly, if you have an alpha hydroxy acid like mandelic acid, you may be tolerated with this ingredient itself or a concentration that's lower. So we talked about skincare acids in the alpha hydroxy acid family. What about beta hydroxy acids? For BHA, there's only one in that group, which is basically your salicylic acid. So salicylic acid ideally should not be mixed with your retinol, it should not mix with your ascorbic acid, and it should not mix with your alpha hydroxy acid. The reason being is that beta hydroxy acid is a powerful exfoliant. When you exfoliate your skin, what happens is that it can increase the potency of the other skincare ingredients. Guys, this is not a said steadfast rule. For example, if you have acne, your dermatologist may say, let's use a beta hydroxy acid in the morning and something like a retinol or retinoid at night. So once again, you need to titrate the use. It's not an absolute steadfast rule. However, if you follow this, at least initially, there's less chances for you to get skin irritation. So today we've covered your vitamin A's, your vitamin B's, which is compatible with most things because it's an anti-inflammatory, vitamin C, your skincare acids. What about other active ingredients? So the most common active ingredient for treating skin pigmentation is hydroquinone or HQ. Hydroquinone is a very potent inhibitor of an enzyme called tyrosinase. And tyrosinase basically makes pigment. In other words, it makes those melanin granules or melanin packets. And in this context, it should not ideally be mixed with your retinol. But once again, this is not a steadfast rule, but it should not be mixed with your retinol, your retinoids. It should not be mixed with vitamin C or ascorbic acid. Here's a caveat, however. There is a product called Triluma, which is basically a um, mixture of both a uh, hydroquinone, your retinoid, as well as hydrocortisone or a corticosteroid. Now, if you're gonna mix something like hydroquinone together with a retinoid, you may benefit from an anti-inflammatory. And that's why the anti-inflammatory is there for, is to counteract the irritation of your hydroquinone and your retinoid. So if you're using it as a standalone, be cautious with that. Vitamin C, the same thing applies. However, the caveat is that if you're compounding hydroquinone, your pharmacist may add a tiny bit of ascorbic acid. So somewhere in the concentration of 0.5 to up to 2% ascorbic acid, not used as a pigment inhibitor, but as an antioxidant to stabilize your hydroquinone. Gets a little bit complex, yeah? But I hope you guys are following me with that. So just as a steadfast rule, your hydroquinones should be used as a standalone, at least initially. When we look at the other skincare ingredients, so things like botanicals, whether it be your bearberry extract, your licorice, your witch hazel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, certainly they can be mixed with most of the skincare ingredients, like your A's, your B's, your C's, and your skincare acids, because the irritant um, threshold of all of these are very much lower compared to more powerful active ingredients. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's a very short one, but a very concise one. I didn't cover all the ingredients known to, um, known to dermatologists for skincare, but most commonly the top seven or eight ones that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So in summary, if you're going to combine things, do it cautiously. My word of advice is that use these I guess guidelines to begin with, especially if you're new to skincare, and then slowly build up on that once you understand your skin threshold. Now, if you exceed your skin threshold, you need to understand how to decrease inflammation, which is super easy. Basically, you wanna stop all uses of all your skincare actives, and you wanna use a benign moisturizer, something which really locks in the moisture and prevents uh, water loss through evaporation. And once that's settled down, you can reintroduce your skincare ingredients bit by bit. So guys, 
Thanks very much for watching and I hope you subscribe. Bye for now.